Hi, I'm Luis Conte, and I'm a percussionist, and I'm here on the Extraordinary Drummer Show with Sharon, having an interview. I want you guys to see this thing, because it's really a good one. Thank you. Well, welcome back. Welcome back to the Extraordinary Drummer Show. As you know, I'm your host, Sharon Moore. You know, I always say, today, today, today. Well, today, family, I've got a legend on the show. I tell you, I'm still pinching myself that he even took my call. Wow. <laughs> Let me just tell you a little bit about him. He's a percussionist. He's an author. He's a clinician. He's a studio musician. He's a legend. I simply call him a drummer's drummer. You know all the hits he's played on, and we'll talk about his credits here in a second. Please help me welcome Louis Conte. Hey, Louis. Thank you. <laughs> How you doing, man? How hey, are you? brother. Welcome to Extraordinary Drummer Show. Glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me, man. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, man. We finally able to hook it up, you know. We were able yeah. To, yeah. I was I was kind of worried for a second. I said, I don't know if I'm going to get him or not. No, just, you know, just things get busy, you know. Yeah, man. Louis, let's, let's go way back. Let's start back from the beginning. You're originally from Cuba, huh? Yeah. I was born in uh, in Santiago de Cuba. That's uh, the second biggest city in, in Cuba. You actually started playing on guitar, huh? Yeah, my first, well, I was down in, in, in Santiago, you know, with my mom and dad. And, and uh, my dad was a doctor, but he, he played instruments and he loved music. My whole family loved music on both sides. So I was around music and I was around, I was playing percussion as a little, little, little boy because my grandmother would bring me, she lived in Havana, she would bring, every time she came, she would bring me an instrument. But she said, this kid loves to play. And so she'd bring me a guido, she'd bring me some maracas, she brought me bongos. And I used to play next to the radio. I should just play along to the radio as a little boy. And so that's really, I used to do that, but I, that's just like, if you're in Cuba, that's kind of like, there's so much percussion, that's just kind of like, just way of life. It's not like a, it's not a thing that you're going to do as a profession, you know. Right. And then, you know, my sister has a rock and roll record. She got like an Elvis record and then somebody got a hold of a Beatle record, something like that. And I fell in love with the rock and roll. I started playing guitar. So what made you switch over to the percussion? One night I'm going, check this out. I'm going over to, to a class and I hear Congress. And I'm like in the United States, you know, this is like, 1970, man, you know, it's not like it is now, you know, the drum, the, the African, the Afro-Cuban influence was, was here, but it's not really into pop music, so, you know, so you don't really, you didn't hear a lot of percussion, you know, it's mostly, and I'm here, I never heard anybody playing a bunch of congas together since I left Cuba, and I heard that, I went in there, it was the African-American Student uh, Body Association Club, you know, they, and they had an event, and I just went in there, and after they finished playing, and I asked those guys, where'd you buy those drums? They said, oh, you can buy those over on Sunset, man. They're called Valjays. I went over and bought a set of congas, and that was the end of it. That was the beginning. What was the scene like in high school? Well, I went to Hollywood High. <laughs> oh, you went to Hollywood High, right? Out of all places, I come from Cuba, man. And I, so my third cousin that I lived with, he happened to live in Hollywood. He had, this guy had left Cuba in a young age, and he had made a career here. He worked, uh, I forget what kind of job. He was a supervisor on some job. And uh, he was married to a lady who was uh, a, a social worker. She was a Jewish American lady who spoke perfect Spanish. So they picked me up, and I stayed with them. But they, haven't, they lived in Hollywood. Like, right, you know, I could walk to Hollywood High. So I went to Hollywood High School, and that was... The first few days was a shock because I was coming from Cuba, man. I, you know, I had no idea what to expect. What, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Did you speak English then? Not really. I, I learned English really quick because I like languages. And if you talk to musicians, musicians are very good with languages. And uh, at least James Taylor told me that once because I love languages, man. And uh, so. I think listening to this music, words and stuff like that, they came easy to me, you know? And I spoke English, I learned how to speak English pretty quick. I mean, within six months I was fluent. Oh yeah. 
Take me to, we talked a little bit about it, uh, Los Angeles City College. Is that where the music scene started to kick up? You started getting yeah. a little Yeah, because I, was, um, I wasn't really, I wasn't sure I got out of high school. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. My parents, you know, I had no family here except my, my that third cousin. And as soon as I was 18, I, I left the house and I was on my own. I had a little job at a supermarket, you know, just getting through, had a roommate, you know, all that stuff the young guys do, you know, 18. And uh, I said, well, I better keep going to school, you know, because my dad wanted me to go to school and become something, you know. So I, I started taking just general classes, not music, just general stuff. And that's when I discovered the music department at Los Angeles City College. So I would go and listen to the, the, uh, the A band when they would practice. And I kind of started getting interested. I took like musicianship one. I started taking some music stuff, not knowing that I was going to play music still, until I walked in that day to the African American Student Association. And I heard them congress. And that was it. I said, <laughs> oh, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Come here. Tell me about starting the jazz band, Caldera. Oh, well, that band, that was later on. That was around, that was way late. That was around, I think it was around 1978, maybe, or 77, something like that. Um, there's a, he, this, this guy who was a really dear friend of mine. He passed away quite a long time ago. His name was Hector Andrade. His nickname is was Bucky. If you talk to some of the old, old school salseros in New York, New Yorkans, they know who Bucky was. And if you look at, if you see the pic, the, the cover of the very first Willie Colon album, where they are, they're, they're, they're all playing pool. They're in a pool table. That's the, uh, the cover. Well, the guys, one of the guys there is Bucky. Cause he, he's the original conga player with, with uh, Willie Colon. Well, him, he was living in LA. By the time I start wishing and realizing, getting focused on what I'm going to do. And I met Bucky early on. So he, he was a big influence in me where, like, what to do, how to play. He recommended me to play with his band. You know, I started playing with salsa bands and all that stuff. And Bucky got the gig, had a gig with that band Caldera. And when they went and record, they were recording a record. I forget the name of the record. It's not Dreamers, the last one. So the one before that, whatever. When we were, they were going to record this record, Bucky called me up and says, hey, man, come come down to Capitol Studios. You know where that is? Come down. We're doing this recording, man. We need one more guy. Come over and play. That's how I met those guys. So I came in through Bucky, my brother, man. He recommended me to come be there. And I met George and Eddie Del Barrio and all those guys. And... And next thing you know, Bucky left the band to do something else, and I joined the band. Wow. That's how it happened. You became a band leader when you released and released the song. Now, I'm going to try to get this right, Louis. La Cocina Caliente. La Cocina Caliente. Did I get it right? Close. <laughs> Co Cocina. <laughs> Cocina. Okay. Yeah, what that, that, means, like? that, means the, that means the hot kitchen. Oh, okay, I got it. I got that name from my bro another brother who also passed. I don't know if you ever heard of the late Carlos Vega. Oh, yeah. He was one of the greatest drummers I ever played with. And uh, Carlos, when we used to play, once in a while he used to go, La Cocina Caliente, you know, because Carlos was Cuban. And uh, so I used that, and I used it as the title of, of my first record. I want to talk about your credits. James Taylor, what was that scene like? Oh, James is great, man. James is uh, playing with, working with, I've been blessed because I worked with a lot of artists like, like Jackson Brown is another one. These guys and James is like, it's, a lot of times, let's say you went out and played, uh, I don't know, I've never worked with, with Janet Jackson or, or Beyonce or somebody like that. There's always the star and the band. The office, the band. James Taylor is James and the band together. 
that's why he introduces that. That's why when they book the tour, it says James Stan on his all-star band, and they put our names there, and and it's like we're treated like one of the artists. It's fantastic, and he's super great, super understanding. The musicality is beyond, man. He's like an incredible musician. On top of that, so it's all around, man. How many instruments do you have back there? Oh. <laughs> About three or four hundred. <laughs> I got a lot of instruments. I got stuff all over the world. And I buy stuff wherever I, if I find something, I'm getting it, you know? And if I'm, I've been able to travel all over the world, so I've found things all over. I mean, I, I couldn't tell you how many instruments I got. I got cases and cases and cases of stuff. And I have a studio, we're not in my studio right now, I have a studio in the back there with a whole bunch of stuff. But I got a whole other set of stuff that goes to the other studios. You know, so it's just massive. You ever been you ever been back there with all of those instruments and one instrument has to go in this one phrase, in this one bar, in this one section, and you can't find it? <laughs> oh. Oh that that's happened before, of course. Everybody, where is the damn thing? <laughs> ah, I used to be here. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, That's I what I've always wondered. If you ever try to put something down, it's like, where's the tambourine? Where's the shaker? Yeah, yeah it happens. Let me ask you this one. Lewis, what is your approach to the percussion instrument? My approach to the percussion instrument? Okay, if you think of, uh, we're going to make a stew here, a nice or a great soup, something like that. So that's your, you know, your composition, the drum, the bass, the piano, the bada bing, bada boom, the singer, the artist, the strings, all that. Wow, that's your great. The percussion, salt and pepper. I just add the last. Oh, let me make this thing a little better. That's my approach. When wow. I record any, any music, you know, when you're playing traditional Cuban music or salsa, whatever you want to call it. You know, there, there are that that style of music. You know, that has rules and there's things that you you do. You know, that has to. But still, you're always playing the music, and you're adding to what that music, to what that is. You know, and you make it you make it feel better. Before I get to some of the drum, a little bit more of the drum talk. What makes you fit everywhere? I mean, you've done every movie, every studio session. What is it about you that just fits everywhere on everything? Man, I think maybe it's because I'm open-minded, man. I, I, don't, I don't put rules on anything. How many songs and studio sessions do you think you've done? Oh, man. <laughs> I know I played in over 2,000 records. I know that. Yeah, because back, back in the day, well, you were saying, that, I mean, I, I didn't catch the Arnold Palmer and, and the Reagan Crew days, you know, those guys were way older than me. But when I started doing the sessions, it was still busy. So you would like, and, and then being a percussionist is, 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 is different because a lot of the times I'm not on the session, you know, when the drums and the, you know, when the basic track is being cut. So those guys, let's say, let's say if I played the drum set, I would be, okay. I'd be hired this week to work on Diana Ross's album. Okay, so I'm the whole week I'm playing on Diana Ross. So in this week I played on one record, right? If I was a drummer, but I'm not on the live track. I'm the percussion player. They call me, hey, hey, we got these tracks for Diana. Can you come on Wednesday? I go sure. So on Wednesday I would do a session for Diana, and then on Thursday I do a movie, and then on Friday I do a session for somebody else. And sometimes you be Man, I remember being, uh, you know, Abraham Laboriel, the bass player, a dear friend of mine. One time he goes, man, they got us like twins over here. Because we'd be like, we were at a, at a studio in the morning doing a jingle. Then we went to do a record for David Lasley at Ocean Way. And we were there. And while we were taking a lunch, here comes a call. They say, hey, can you guys make a 7 o'clock for, uh... yeah, we can make that. So, like, we're like three sessions. You know? <laughs> so, as a percussionist, when I'm, uh, to answer your question, it's like I would play sometimes on two or three albums in a week. 
because I didn't have to be there the whole week. I would just spend one day. So it's just a whole bunch, man, a whole bunch of records. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Talk about this one. Yeah. Did you ever get to meet Mongo? Yeah. Oh, man. Man. Mongo, the man. I love Mongo Santa Maria, man. What was the difference between Johnny Pacheco, Mongo Santa Maria, and Ray Barreto? Oh, man. Com three completely different guys. Well, first of all, Pacheco was a producer, singer, and flute player. Oh. And he played Weedle. He also played a lot of Weedle. I never saw him play. I'm sure he played some percussion. I'm sure he could play congas and stuff like that. But he was, you know, a band leader. But mainly singing up front, playing flute, and, and playing widow. Barreto is a conga player, like Mongo, but it's a different, different, completely different style, you know. Uh, Barreto's style reminds me more of, like, listening to, like, Tata Wines or somebody like that from Cuba. Mongo is just Mongo. It was this thing, you know. Um, Barreto is ju just, as, just as great, you know. It's just two completely different animals, man. Yeah. I grew up with all that stuff, man. I, I was right in the middle of it, man. Well, me too, man. I saw Ray a billion times. and I would Because I started traveling in 73, you know, and I would go to New York a lot. As soon as I finished the show I was doing, or if I had a day, I'd, I'd be hanging out in the, the Corso, Barney Googles, you know, all them places. Yeah. yeah. I remember listening to, oh, what's his name? Um, Hector. Hector Lavoe. Hector Lavoe, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, I miss those days. Well, Let's stay in the percussion area. Let's talk endorsements. What are you doing endorsements? Uh, different instruments and whatnot. Yeah, I, I well, I play Meinl. M E I N L is a German company, Meinl Percussion, who's a pretty big company all over the world. I play all their instruments, and 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 with them, I went with them because they allowed me to design some stuff that I. The way I like it. So I got my own timbales. I have my own congas that I design. I got my own bongos that I design. It's a, it's a whole family of the Afro Cuban thing. I got my own shakers, which, because doing so many sessions, you have shakers and the producer, oh man, you had a softer shaker? Oh, that shaker is too rough. I mean, can you have something that's softer? Or, or you got a louder one? You know, I designed these three sets of shakers. Like, you can show up with the three shakers. That's all. Nobody's going to say nothing. Oh, yeah, I got this one. Oh, but that one? Okay, that one. Yeah. So, minor precaution. I've been with um, with them since 90, for a long time, since 97, something like that. I've been with Siljan since the 80s, early 80s, Siljan cymbals. And I also got my own sticks with Siljan, Siljan sticks. I use Gibraltar hardware, uh, Remo heads. I use Remo heads for my for everything. My conga, the bongos, timbal. Um, yeah. I, I forget somebody. Gibraltar, I mentioned. If I forget somebody, excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> but them guys. Yeah. And they all support me real well, man. Minor percussion is great, man. Minor's straight ahead. Lewis, we do a thing on the show we call Word of Advice. Where well, I ask the drummers, I ask the guests if they'll leave a parting word for the up and coming guys, uh, even the guys at the next level, but that are trying to get traction in this game. Would you leave them a word of advice? Yes, sir. Keep your eyes on the prize, like Martin Luther said, man, because it's the music business is probably one of the worst business, if not the worst business in the world. But you can get there if you take care of business. You got to look at that light at the end of the tunnel and don't let, you got to get bumped. You got to get, that tunnel is going to be rough. But you got to keep focused and don't get, you know, you got to be responsible, be a, a human being is just as important as being a great musician. I know great musicians that are not cool human beings. They're not going to get there. It's all a package. Just is how you are and believe in God, man. Trust the Lord. He'll take you there. Gotcha. Thank you for that, brother. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about 
some of your books. There's one, Louis Conte, Guide to Latin Percussions, Volume 1. Yeah. We, we, we did that. I did that with my buddy um, who's a great percussionist. His name is Ian Fry. This kid, and this is a, a, a an example for people, you know, I've had people ask me, oh, man, but, you know, I'm from Thailand, man. You think I'll be able to, like, play, you know, rumba, you know? Or, oh, man, I'm from Arkansas. You think I, I said, dude, you know, you just dive in. You, if you got, if you have the talent of time and, and, and you have that gift and you love it, dive in and you'll be able to do it. You know, it's all a culture, it's cultural, it's the whole package. So at, when, I'm, when I'm saying this, because this guy that I did the book with, is, his name is Ian Fry. He's about as white as you can get, about Ameri Americano, you know, from here, from right from here, from Westlake. I met him through my son when they were going to high school, and I started giving him lessons. And he's now, he, he's now going, he's gone to Santiago four times and played at the carnival down there with all them guys down there, you know. So him and I, it was really more, more from him because he's very organized and I'm, I'm the opposite. He goes, man, you got to do a book. So we did a book together. And uh, it's, it's excellent, man. It has samples, and you can. And it's it's, it's volume one. It's it's from if, it's for people that don't know anything about the drum, and about the instruments. It's it's the beginning. It's a beginner. We're gonna do a lot volume two, but uh, volume one is this is beginning. You got a conga drum. How do you tune it? What are the basic sounds? What's the basic tumbao? What pattern? We got timbales. We got conga, bongo. We got the maracas. Everything is there. And we have samples for it too, so it's, oh. it's digital, you know. Way cool, yeah. Lewis. You played on the uh, Grammys the other night. Yeah, the Grammy premiere. Uh, what was that like? Oh man, it's it's a great hang, man. And and this time, we're not. You know, they they have changed. I was talking with my wife the other day. I said, you know, I wonder how many Grammy premieres I've done because I did like seven of them or so with Patrice Russian, then she didn't do them anymore, and then Larry Baptiste came, and I did like 10 of them. And then this band leader came in, his name is Cheche Alara. He's from Argentina, he's fantastic. It's like so, such a pleasure to work with, man. And he puts a great band together. And we've been doing that, I mean, because of the pandemic, we didn't do it for a couple of years. But we did it last year in Vegas, was the first one when they came back. And then this year, it's great, because. We are the premiere, which is, for me, the cool categories, you know. You got jazz, you got, you know, ethnic music, you know, you got all, all the, you know, spoken word, uh, gospel, whatever. You know, it's not the stuff you see in the main show, which is still cool, you know, but, you know, these are the cats, man. Wayne Shorter is nominated, you know, I mean, people like that, you know. So... It's in the Microsoft Theater, so all these people are there. So it's like we're playing, and the people are there are listening to the musicians, man. Everybody's it's a guild, man. Everybody's voting for each other. It, it's great. It's just a great, great thing. I love doing it. It's <laughs> it's a there's some long days. I mean, it, we're there all week, you know. Like I said, cause we were gonna do this last week and I couldn't do it. But um, it's 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 really fun. Way cool. Yeah. Lewis, we got a question that we usually ask the guests at the end of the show. Lewis, what would you want your legacy to be, to be said, to be told? Oh, man. I would just like the people think that I was a nice guy. Man. I just want to be thought of that I'm a good guy. That's all. I don't – yeah, it's nice to be recognized by your peers – you play good, okay, maybe you get an award. Okay, that's all great. I'm, I I love it. But when all is said and done, and you're pushing lilies out there, it goes, oh, man, he was a cool guy, man. That guy was cool. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to say a whole lot more than that, Louis. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> but as long as they, if they say that, I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah. Hey, we touched on this a little bit earlier. What a what a journey you on, man. You ever pinch yourself and just go, whoa. Bro, man, listen, I went back to Santiago after 40-some years. I went in 2009, I went back. 
And it was like 2 in the morning. I'm in the hotel, which is the hotel I stayed in was three blocks from where I lived, from my house, my original house, my street, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it was like I had just come out of this the house of the Troubadour that was music, and it was like 2 in the morning. And I'm going in the hotel. I go in my room, and I went like, man, I'm going to walk over to my, my street. I want to see what it's like. And I was, it was, it's like three in the morning or something. And I'm in this dark street. There's my house. And I just stood there. I took a couple of pictures. I just stood there, man. And like, like you say, I'm pinching myself. I'm going like, I came from here. I'm right here. This is my spot. And I went, oh. it's like only the man upstairs. Yes, sir. Amen. I can't imagine that you would have such a successful career and journey because you plugged in to the boss upstairs, man. That's it. You're letting him lead the show, you know? You got to be plugged in. As musicians say, you're letting him call the songs. <laughs> That's it. Hey, Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, man. Man, I, 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 there's been times where, like, you're going like, oh, well, we're, you know, I, well, how come, you know, I'm, I'm over here. I should be over here, but it's not happening. Oh, it's not happening. And all of a sudden, oh, well, that's why that didn't happen, because this happened. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Lewis, did your parents get a chance to see the success? Yeah. Uh, my mom more than my dad. My dad, unfortunately, passed away. Um Right when I was, I mean, you know, I was doing, they, they saw me play a lot of gigs. And they they saw me play with Diana Ross and stuff like that. But really when I, when I kind of like, I think my career sort of like jumped over a certain hoop. It was like when I started working with Madonna. Okay. And that was like in 87. And my dad passed away. He, when I got the gig with Madonna, he was in the hospital already. So he never did see me play with her. I told him about it, but well, he never saw it. But uh, my mom did. Way cool, yeah. way cool. My Is mom your... and dad, man, my mom and dad. I don't, you know the club, the Big Potato over here. Oh, yeah. you know, yeah, I, oh, played, yeah. I played there for years. I, every, you know, once, once in a while. I mean, for years and years and years. I'm talking since the seventies, man. And uh, when my mom and dad. If I was playing, my mom and dad comes to they'd be at the club. Every baby did, no matter what. My dad would like stay behind and go, like, okay, let me help you with your stuff. You know, I was like, I don't know, dad, come on. So it was our great parents, man. <laughs> are you are you are your kids, any of the siblings, any of the kids looking like they're gonna play or they're picking up music? No, they're very talented. My son is uh, actually a really good drummer. He has really good feel which is the main thing for a drummer, is the feel. You know that. Yeah. And he got that going on. But he decided to become a, 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 he's a nurse practitioner. And he plays for fun. Way cool. Yeah. And then my daughter's married. She's a housewife. She's she's um, very talented. She Man, she can pick up songs. She can sing harmony to a song and all that stuff. But she never wanted to, never, never ever was interested in, in doing anything. So I didn't push him. That's okay. Yeah, that is okay. They are doing what they want, you know? Yeah, yeah. Doing what they want. Let me say thank you so very much for being on the Extraordinary Drummer Show. Man, my pleasure. Thank, thank you for inviting me, my brother. Yes, man. I really appreciate having you on. Will you help us wave goodbye to all the fans? All right, everybody. Hey, and if you guys are around LA, March 10th, I'm at the Bay Potato with my band. Come on down. But Say by the way, all your fans, you're on. Say bye. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you, man. You. All the best. Hi, I'm Luis Conte. And here I have a set of uh, Luis Conte signature series bongos. Uh, it's a fantastic set of drums. I, I absolutely love these drums, and uh, it's the right size for me, the right weight. Because one thing about some, some drums, they can be like too heavy. And since you play them 
traditionally in this in this form, it can be kind of a pain to do that. So this is just a particular right size for me. And again, it has that, just like my congas, it has the traditional uh, hoop on the drum. I also love the color, the natural look of it with the black and the chrome. And, and it's the most important thing is that they sound great. So I'll play a little bit for you, okay? That's the embra, the female drum. And that's el macho, the male. 